Hey, it's Parm King, and this is a Foundry tip. This one's on improving your performance and fixing issues. Now, I did make this video almost a year ago. We were using Foundry version 6. I had an older laptop at the time. There's been some improvements, actually quite a few improvements. We're in Foundry version 8.9, a stable version at this point. There's some other things I wanted to touch on that I learned over my year of experience using Foundry as well. Now, to make this video, video easy. I did down in the description below, divided into chapters, included some timestamps so you can jump ahead or when you come back, find that area that might be of interest to you. Or if you have some players having problems, you can direct them directly to that timestamp in which they may need to, to watch to solve the problem that they're having or improve their performance. Now, before I get started, I want to mention deductive reasoning locating where that problem is to improve that performance or fix the issue. So here's the basic rule of thumb. If all the players are experiencing a problem, the chances are it's at the host level and or foundry level that needs to be set up. It could be an internet upload from the host. It could be something with his ports. It could be big maps or something at his level that needs to be addressed or her level, the host level. Now, if all the players are experiencing a good time, but one player out there is having an issue, that issue is going to be on the player side. It's going to be their internet connection, their memory, or their CPU utilization. And you can focus on fixing their issue rather than just saying it's, a, it's probably not a Foundry-related issue. It's an issue residing at their end. Now, the first part of this video, we're going to talk about the three things that affect Foundry performance. And you already know what all these three things are. This is just a refresher and a reminder and something that I remind all my players to do to review to address these problems. So the three things that determine the performance level of Foundry are your internet connectivity, your memory on your computer, and your CPU. So let's address each one of these separately and think about them for a second. The first one is internet. Now we all have our own internet packages out there that we have with our internet provider. We can't change those things, but there's some things to be aware of. Now, from my anecdotal research, the low end download speed I've seen on the internet from people that I've asked around is about 15 megabytes. On average, people are running between 25 and 50. Some are running at, at 100. I have a 100 meg download and even some on my Discord channel have up to 400 download. Now, even at 15 or 20, you're not going to have a problem with this game. Some maps might be a little slower to load, but one of the things that you need to keep in mind is if you're in a household with shared internet, meaning that you might have a brother or sister, mom or dad, maybe a son or daughter or roommate that's also sharing the internet, and at the time that you're playing, are they downloading something or streaming something? That could have a relative impact on your gaming performance. The one thing that you can control as a player, though, is making sure that on your computer, nothing in the background is currently downloading. You're not doing any big updates, system updates, downloading any games as you're playing because that can significantly impact your gaming experience if Foundry's trying to download or load a map for you during the game. That can definitely impact your gaming experience. So making sure that you manage uh, on your own computer your internet downloading what's going on. Now, if you're hosting the game on your computer, you're going to be focused on your upload speed. Now, on average, again, this is anecdotal evidence, evidence that I've found is about 10 to 15 is about seems to be about the average in the states for upload speed. Some people have 25, 50. I have 100. Some people have faster. Now, if you're over 10, you shouldn't really have a problem if you're hosting uh, it. Remember, if the more players you have, the bigger of your maps. If you have 10 megabytes upload and you have five players and your map's 10 megabytes, it's going to take a little time. It could take 10, 20, 30 seconds for each of those players to download those maps. So your bottleneck is going to be your upload speed. Now, if you happen to be running below 10 megabytes, you have five or six players, you have some big maps, you may want to think about hosting your game on the cloud Uh Amazon, AWS, there's a bunch of cloud services out there. I actually use a cloud-based service that's dedicated to uh, foundries called The Forge. Uh, I have a link of it right here. I'll put a link down below. It's, it's four bucks a month. They handle everything for you. They have all the modules on there. Now, if you're running at 10 megabytes or over in upload speed, you probably don't need this, but you might have some slow experience is depending on the size of your maps. If you were like me when I started on a laptop with only five meg when I first started, upload speeds 
Um, I really couldn't even run uh, Foundry on my system w without having problems, and I went ahead and used the Forge. So that's just a tip there for you. The second thing we have is memory. Now, the again, anecdotal evidence that average players out there are gonna have at least eight megs of memory on their computer. Some of us have 16, I say a good percentage of us have 16, and a few have 32 or 64. Now, if you have experience in Photoshop, editing big pictures or videos or audio, you know the value of RAM because you have to load up those huge video, audio, or picture files that you're going to be editing. Well, RAM is also used by your web browser, by all your different software that you're using. It's loading it up into your random access memory. And if you fill it up, the computer is going to be figuring out what's most important at that any given time. And that can significantly impact uh, you're experiencing using Foundry. And let me give you a real world ex uh, example of this. I've got uh, Chrome running right here. I've got four tabs in Chrome up and I've got my um, task manager right here. So here we go, we got Chrome, I got it highlighted. I've got 224 megabytes. And what happens if I open up four more tabs? So remember 220 megabytes right here in Chrome. And if I go over here and go, hey, you know, I'm gonna be surfing on Amazon looking for something to, something to buy. I'm going to go be reading uh, some articles on The Economist, keeping up with some current events and some news. So I click on that. Oh, by the way, I got to go to D&D Beyond, check up on, on, on some stuff on Dungeons and Dragons. I'm going to be watching some YouTube. And so just like we all do through the day, you're going through the internet and doing all these kinds of things that you want to do. And let's see how much just opening up four tabs I went from 250 megabytes to 650. Now, right now I'm running Brave Browser, which has my Forge instance on that you saw earlier. I also have an instance of Foundry running here, Discord, Chrome, OBS, and I have 16 uh, gigs. I'm using 50% of my memory already. If you only have eight gigs of memory on your computer, well, your computer will be running at 95 to 100%. One thing that happened to me, I was playing in a game, everybody was having a good time. One of the players, this was last year, was saying, hey, I'm having some problems, I think there's a foundry issue. The game master said, turn on your task manager, show me how much memory you're using and what your CPU load. He had 20 tabs open in his web browser and something running in the background. He, nothing was running on his computer. The game master said, shut off your computer, restart it, open up one instance of your web browser and get your Discord back on player came back online, everything was running smoothly. And that's just because he wasn't managing his memory. He was probably like all of us, including myself, you know, doing all the stuff that we do during the day on the internet. Oh, and it's game session time, so let me just log in, forgetting that I have 20 tabs open and software running in the background and everything seems really slow. So rule of thumb, tell your players before you're gonna start your game, turn off your computer, go get a glass of water, your favorite beverage, come back, turn it on, Open up one browser instance, log in to Foundry, get your Discord going, and off you go. That's going to solve a, uh, a big issue for a lot of your, your players in their performance category. So there's just this, a simple example, just opening up some more tabs, how much more memory you can use really quickly. Let me get rid of those things here. So memory is uh, a thing to focus on. Last but not least is CPU utilization. Just like your memory, your computer is using both its CPU and if you have a GPU, which is a graphics prof processor, it's gonna be using both. The more software you have running on your computer, the more CPU and or GPU. You can see right here, I'm using 24% um, in my OBS studio. That's for my camera and my video here that I'm running and I'm running a little bit up here in the Brave browser as well. That's where I have a live Forge instance. I have it, uh, Discord and some other things running here as well. So that's just gonna use up your CPU utilization. How are we going to manage that? So those are the three things that will determine how smooth your game is going to run. Internet connectivity, memory, and your CPU. Managing those resources will certainly improve your gaming experience. 
Okay, part two of this video, improving and getting your web browser to operate as efficiently as possible. Now there's a website here for troubleshooting and we're gonna be talking about that here for your performance. There's a link down below. This website here is for Foundry and it has all the stuff for Foundry troubleshooting. We're just talking about performance. And so the first thing we're gonna do is talk about browser hardware acceleration. Now from what I have been told, um, we want to use Chrome. You can use Firefox, you wanna use a Chrome or Chromium because from what I've been informed is really the designers and developer of Foundry have really focused on the, the Chrome system uh, and that's probably gonna be the most efficient. Most of us are already running Chrome or a Chrome-based browser and few of us are also running Firefox. Now, the first thing we wanna do is it says it's here, you wanna to go to your address bar, navigate to Chrome, uh, forward colon um, flag. So let's do that right now. I'm gonna just type that in here. I'm in Chrome colon forward slash flags. And we wanna make sure that override software rendering list is enabled. When you, if you can't find it, you can just type it in here in the search engine, override software rendering list uh, is enabled. And just make sure it's enabled. It might ask you to restart your computer at this point after you do that. So once that's enabled, then we're gonna go in here to WebGL and make sure we enable that. There's a wiki here, we're gonna just click on that wiki. It tells you how to do it, but instead, I'll give you the link to that, um, but I'm gonna show you it in real time here. So we're gonna to go to Chrome, colon, settings, and we're going to scroll down, we're in the advanced section, we're gonna scroll, scroll all the way down to the advanced section, and we're going to find Use hardware acceleration when available. Make sure that's clicked on. It's gonna ask you to restart your, your system. When you do, you're gonna go back to your Chrome Flags window and you're gonna type in WebGL in here and you're gonna get WebGL draft extensions. It used to be WebGL 2.0, but there's some other draft extensions now. So it's WebGL draft extension, enable that. Now what you've done is you've made your Chrome browser super efficient to be running Foundry in. So if you're having any browser related issues in Chrome, enabling hardware acceleration, enabling WebGL, and also uh, turning off the um, uh, override, or turning on the over, override software rendering list, those things are gonna make your Chrome Chromium browser run better and cleaner. Now, two other tricks that I, or two other recommendations that I'm making, you don't have to do it or not, is I use a software here, it's free, I've used it for the last 10 years, it's called C, uh, C Cleaner or CC Cleaner that I use, there's a free version of this. Once a month I just run this, this cleans out all my temporary internet files, just makes my computer run a little bit faster. You might, I'll put a link down below, I've been using the free version for 10 years. Just run it once a month. It's kind of like a little house cleaning, especially with all that internet temporary stuff and your and, and some stuff that you don't use anymore. So think about that. I also use the Brave browser. It's a Chromium-based browser. I've been using this uh, for a long time now, even through my entire Foundry experience. I prefer Brave because it has some privacy uh, and security protocols as well as uh, it's, it's, uh, blocking from from uh, some ads. You don't have to use it, you can use Chrome. This is a Chromium browser. The setup is exactly the same way as in Chrome, but I'll put a link down for Brave down below. So we've gotten step one, understanding the three concepts of resource management, internet, memory, and CPU. We've got your browser set up to be efficient with WebGL and hardware acceleration. So those things are done. Now we're gonna talk about step three, inside Foundry itself, some configurations to improve performance. So let's jump into Foundry, and here we are. We're in Foundry, and I wanna take a look at something right here. I've got my game session. I'm hosting Curse of Strahd, and we can see I've got some animation going on in here. I've got a bunch of modules loaded. Everything's going on, but what's what my CPU is, I'm using 6.5% CPU in, in the Brave browser, in about anywhere from 10 to 20%, 22% now in my GPU load. So if we click over here to the uh, settings menu and bring up our, our core settings, there's some things in here that'll improve performance. Now, just for fun, I went through here and figured out what's the one thing that's gonna improve the performance the most. So you have enable soft shadows, 
token vision animation, light source animation, these three settings, turning them off will improve performance. But it's not the one that's gonna improve the performance the most. The one that'll improve the performance the most is your frame rate settings. Now, we're not playing a first person shooter with super high frame rates. We're playing role playing game with some battle maps and some, some lighting in here. So we don't need super, super high frame rates in here. So I'm gonna show you how big of an impact this has. So I have, again, let's just take a quick look. I've got uh, anywhere from five to 10% on my CPU load, and I got anywhere from about, uh, well, 12 up to 22% on my um, GPU load. I'm only gonna, and I'm running real high power usage. So I got high power usage up here and high, high load on my computer. Just in Brave, and the only thing I have open in my Brave browser is Forge in my game instance. I'm gonna take my maximum frame rate down to 10, and all that's gonna do is slow down the frame rate, the flickering of the candles and my animation speed. I'm gonna save changes. And you can see that the flickering rate is not flickering as much, it's coming on, but it's, it's 10 frames per second, not 60. So what did that do to my load? I'm down for, to moderate from high. I'm at 2.8 CPU, it's down in half. I'm only in two to six on my GPU load. I've, I've significantly, now it's even low. It's gone, from, it's gone from high to low to moderate to low. Just your frame rate is going to take a huge burden off your CPU and your GPU. So the first thing I would do if, if you're having CPU load issues, bring up your task manager. If this thing is just, if your GPU and your CPU are just rocketing really high, take your frame rate down to 10. It's really not gonna impact your game that much. I mean, the flicker rate of some of the lighting effects and everything, that's gonna be the biggest impact that I have found in my experimentation is frame rate 60 to 10. Now, uh, Foundry comes in default at 60, just set it down to 10 and you're just gonna lower, I mean, I'm running at low and then it just pops up to moderate low, it won't go high anymore. Huge difference. Frame rate, run it at 10, make a world of difference on your CPU load. All right, so we've got all of those things done here. We're going on to the next step. So we've covered, first step we covered, uh, managing our resources, internet, memory, and CPU. We've talked about setting up our browser to be super efficient. And we've talked about some set settings, configure settings inside the game itself. The last section here is for you, the game master, the host of the game. And we're gonna go over some things in here to improve the performance for your players. Now, the first thing I want you to think about as a game master is you have this file cabinet. Think about a physical file cabinet with all your game stuff in there. You got your maps in there. It's like, think about your bookshelf with Dungeons and Dragons. You know, you got your DM's guide and you've got your player's handbook and your monster manual. Well, you've got this file cabinet of all your stuff for your game session. Now, we're gonna just make that electronic. And it, it exists in the electronic world, but it exists just on your computer or just on the cloud. You're not sharing it with everybody. And that is what your compendiums are. Now, your compendiums over here, it's the, uh, the, the, the Compendium it looks like a little book with uh, some kind of icon in it. I don't know what it is. But your compendiums, I'm gonna show you in here, is where you're gonna store all that stuff. Now look at all the scenes I have. I've been running Curse of Strahd for almost a year now. I have tons of maps. See are the mind maps, battle maps, even some animation, tons of that stuff in here. Okay, I also have, let's see, what else do I have here? I have my journal entries in here. Wow, no, those are the wrong ones. Uh, it's the... Uh, no, those are the right ones. Just taking a, that's there's so many, it's just taking a long time to load. There they are. So here's all my journal entries. If I open these up, you can see, I mean, they, they, they just expand, they go on forever. So there's just a ton and ton. I mean, I don't even want to get into these journal entries. They're just massive. All of these are in my compendium, including I got some items in here. Do I have items in here? I know I have items in here. Here's my shared items list. Uh, it's not that one, it's this one here. It's called uh, Curse. Here's all my share items list. Now, think about your compendiums as this file cabinet, this digital file cabinet that's not being shared. It's yours, right? You don't have to upload it, and then players aren't downloading it. Now I want you to think about this menu over on your right-hand side. That's your 
scenes, your actors, all of these directories over here are shared directories. So if I import, which I can, my compendium of all my scenes, if I click on scenes and I click import all content, it's going to import all that content from these compendiums out of my file cabinet into the game. That means I'm going to have to push them all up through my bandwidth and my upload. My player's going to download it all and it's going to slow the game down. If you got your monsters, do not put your all your monsters in your actress directory. Do not put all your items in your items directory. Do not put all your journals in your... Just put in there what you're going to be using for your game session and then move them back into the compendium. This is going to radically improve the speed and performance and downloading and load times of your game. If you load all that stuff into these shared directories, you're going to slow your game down. So think about the compendiums as your file cabinets. You can pull things out of here and just import what you want. Hey, I'm going to be going to the uh, Salinka Canyon. Just import that over there. And if I import it over there, boom, there it is. The canyon's over here now. I only have that thing loaded into the game. Now I can go ahead and just delete it. And it's gone. Uh, and it's still over here. So if I want to import it, I can import it again. So all of these in here, you can import them uh, back into your scenes or your actors as you need them. That's number one thing. Number two, this is a shocker. This was a shocker for me, but it made a huge difference. Your chat log. Now, if you're at session, you know, eight, nine, ten, and you've not deleted your chat log once, every time your players load up the game, they're going to be loading up this chat log, and it's just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And pretty soon you're going to have like, you know, 10 megs, 50 megs, 100 megs, 200 megs of just this massive chat log. I now delete my chat log at the end of every game session. I tell my players, anything in the chat log you want to go back and review, please do. I'm deleting at the game session. When they come to a new game session, chat log is completely erased. This will, especially if you're running multiple long sessions, will definitely improve performance of the game. Players don't have to download this huge chat log from the last 20 sessions. And if you're playing three to four hour sessions like I am, that chat log can get long and extensive. It includes little graphics and all kinds of things in there as well. So it can be pretty, pretty big. So those are the two things. Keep everything in the compendium. Just move over stuff into these shared directories as needed for your game session and delete the chat log. Now let's talk about the last thing here for you as a player. I've got my Foundry set up here and you may be knowing that I'm making Foundry modules right now for Curse of Strahd. If you're a Patreon member, you can download the different scenes and all the extra content that I'm creating along with these beautiful maps from DM Andy. Now, DM Andy makes these gorgeous maps, and I'm sure you're playing in Foundry, and you have some really gorgeous 4K or even 8K maps. A lot of people are using Dungeon Draft and Encarta and, and uh, you know, Wonder Draft or whatever, making these gorgeous maps, and some of them are high res. Well, I noticed that DM Andy's beautiful high res maps, this is a 4K high res map. It's uh, floor one of the Wizard's Tower. And if I zoom in, you can see that it's it's got some really nice crisp, clear elements in there. But I decided to have two sizes of map. I resized the map into a low res map. Now the problem with 4K maps, you're looking at anywhere between 3.5 to 7 megs per map. If you're running 8K maps, you're at 15 to 25 or even higher, 40. I've even had 30, 40 megabyte size maps. Super high resolution. Well, if you're hosting this, you got to push all of that up through your upload speed and bandwidth, and all the players got to download it, and then it's a lot of memory to use. If you were playing this scene for your game session, the Wizard's Tower, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six maps. Now, if each one of these are 10 megabytes, you've got 60 megabytes, almost 100 megabytes of maps that you got to push out to each player. Every player's got to download them. Every player's got to load each one of these up. They're all going to be over here in your scene directory, over here at the Wizard's Tower. Here they all are. So I made low res version, versions of them. Let's check out a dis, uh, the difference. So I'm zoomed out here, and I'm just going to switch over to the low res version. Here's the high res. We're going to and let's just move it over so you can see the difference. Take a look at this area right here that I'm highlighting. And I'm going to move over to the low-res version. I've selected it. I'm going to save it. 
here we go. So it's just a little fuzzier. You can, you can only notice it if you zoom in closely. I mean, the, the knife blades are maybe not super sharp. If I switch back to the high-res version of the map, there we go, high-res version. This is the 4K version. It, they get really sharp. So you're not really going to notice that unless you zoom in. The big difference for you and those players that are playing in the game, my low-res maps that I've created for DM Andes are between 500K to 750K versus, you know, four megabytes. So, you know, you're running at 10% the map size uh, uh, to upload and for them to download. So it's going to create faster loading times and you're giving up just a little bit of resolution. It's really not that bad. The same thing with James RPG Art here. James has been really nice to allow us to include low-res versions of his map. And this is a low-res version, and it still looks super gorgeous. Of course, when you zoom in, it's not as crisp and clear as his high-resolution animated maps. But hey, it's still a really good map, and it's only 500K, so it's a fast loading time in there. So think about the map sizes that you use. Now, the last thing I want to talk about here in this performance and issues is setting expectations. Now, when you're out there, you're going to host a game like I am, and you're looking for players. And usually when we're setting expectations, we're talking about the rules of the game, the homebrew rules, the do's and don'ts of the game itself but we're not talking about setting expectations for the kind of graphics needed. So if you're one of those players out there that really wanna push the limits and make a really razzle-dazzle campaign, including some of those Unreal uh, Engine maps or Unity Engine maps and high-resolution maps, you know, or 8K maps and all kinds of stuff, set the expectations for the player. Tell them that I need admit, you need to play my game, you need 16 megabytes i7 processor with a GPU processor with a minimum of 50 megabytes download to play in my game to have a good experience. You want your players to have a good experience and you wanna put on this really cool performance, make sure that they have the minimum system requirements to experience that. Because if you get a player that plays and they don't know that on the front end and they're logging in with an eight megabyte i5 dual core processor with you know 15 download speed, by the way, that used to be me on my old laptop, they're gonna have a gray screen and could be waiting minutes for the map to load and that's frustrating for the player and it's frustrating for you and the other players in the game. So set expectations what kind of game that you're going to run. If you wanna run a game and, and allow a lot of lower end machines to play, just run some lower resolution maps. You're gonna have still an amazing experience. This is role playing. Foundry is really a support tool in there. Go through there making sure that they restart their computer, especially if you're using a low end machine, running one browser instance, running one Discord instance, using low resolution maps, they're gonna have a great experience. Now, last but not least, modules. I've heard this on Reddit, I've heard this on Discord, people have been chatting with me saying, you know, I'm gonna stop using some of these modules or stop using a lot of the modules because the modules are slowing down the system. Let me explain something to you about modules. I'm currently running 87 active modules in my game. And we've talked about it at the beginning of the video. The three things that determine your performance of Foundry are what? Your internet speed, the memory utilization, and CPU utilization. Now, from my experience running 87 modules in Foundry in version, I'm on 8.8, .8, in version 8.8 .8 is almost none of the modules are gonna affect your internet speed. Almost none of them. In fact, I don't know any of them that are gonna be impacted by internet speed. Very few of them are going to impact the memory load of the players, unless that module has sounds or, or graphics or something in there. It's not going to improve the memory load. The one thing it may impact is your CPU utilization. So before you start deleting modules or just turning them off, the first thing is go through everything we've talked about first before you do that. And you're going to realize that you know, managing your, your resources is gonna be more important than in here. What do you got running in your compendium versus what do you have in your shared directories? Um, do you have big maps or small maps? Um, are the players running at 60 frame rates or 10 frame rates? All those things are gonna have a dramatic 
impact on the performance before you turn it off and on these modules. And even in some of these modules that might be taxing some on your CPU, within the modules, don't forget, if you go into your core settings, there's a whole section on module settings. So you can go in here and you can change some things in your module settings that might uh, improve performance or become less taxing on the CPU. So just don't, don't be afraid of installing modules. Uh, my experience with modules, the bad things about modules, the only two things that have affected me with modules are this. Number one, I've updated to version 8, and some of the modules haven't been updated, and so I have to disable them or go back to use the older version. So it's a version, or I have conflicting modules. I have not had an experience yet where the modules themselves are, are, are impacting my bandwidth, my memory utilization, or becoming too taxing on my CPU. It's usually versions, updating to new versions of Foundry and waiting for my modules to update, or modules are conflicting with one another. Those are the only two issues that I have. So I hope this was helpful. I've got a bunch of links down the bottom, links to Fixit pages, uh, to Brave, to uh, cleaners, all kinds of stuff down there. I've linked, uh, put some timestamps in there. I hope you're enjoying Foundry as much as I am. It's an amazing platform, amazing experience. This is Parm King signing off, and may all your roles be critically 20 or critically successful, depending on what game system you're playing. Till next time.